Welcome to today's discussion on relations and functions. Let's begin with number two. What value of y corresponds to x equaling negative five? Well, x is negative five on the x-axis at the point which I just circled. This ordered pair point is negative five comma zero. Therefore, the y value is zero at this point. Let's also work example number five. It says for what value may be values of x is y equal to four. Well, y is equal to four all along this dashed line that I am drawing. So the points on the graph are on the left side, the point negative four, positive four, the point negative one, positive four, and the point five, positive four. From those three points, the x values are negative four, negative one, and five. Now as we move down on this document, we will see that the next questions are referring to a table of values rather than a graph. And let's look at number 11. Number 11 asks, for what values of x is y equal to negative 10? Well, if I highlight the y values of negative 10, we can then see the corresponding x values that go with those y values. So in this case, the, there are two x values that go with a y value of negative 10, and they are x values of negative five and positive one. Let's move to the next page. We will now look at expressions and have questions in topic two, asking to evaluate the expression. Let's evaluate using the x value of negative five. On number 10, if I substitute the x value of negative five, this will be the square root of negative five plus four, which would be the square root of negative one. We cannot take the square root of negative one, so our answer would be that this is not a real number. Let's also look at number 12, substituting the value of negative five. This would be negative of the absolute value of negative five minus two. The absolute value of negative five, which I'm highlighting, will be a positive five. But the negative in the front will now apply to that positive five. So this becomes negative five minus two, which results in negative seven. The next topic says to determine values for which the rational expression is undefined. When you have a rational expression, a fraction with variables in it, you do not want the denominator to equal zero. The bottom of the fraction cannot equal zero or the fraction, rational expression, will be undefined. Let's look at number 14. Focusing on only the bottom of the fraction, we know that the bottom of the fraction cannot equal zero. So we determine values of A which make it zero and eliminate those values from being used in that expression. If I solve my equation, I would add 81 to each side of the equation and then take the square root. Now remember when you take the square root to put the plus minus sign in front. The square root of 81 is nine, so this results in the two values of a positive nine and a negative nine. So if A is nine or if A is negative nine, it will cause the bottom of the rational expression to equal zero, which will make the rational expression undefined. We will use a similar method on number 16. Again, what x values make the bottom of the fraction or the denominator equal zero? This could be written as x squared plus three x equaling zero. I will now factor out an x and then set each of these factors equal to zero. 
my first value, x equaling zero, and my second value would be a negative three. So the two values which make the rational expression or this fraction undefined are an x value of zero and an x value of negative three. Topic four takes us into square roots. With a square root, we cannot take the square root of a negative number in the real number system. That means that the radicand or the information under the square root must either equal zero or be positive. We write this as two x plus three greater than zero means positive values or equal. These are values which are fine when substituted in to this expression. If I subtract three off of each side of the inequality and then divide by two, I get x values greater than or equal to negative three halves. Those values when substituted into the radicand will make that either a positive value or zero. This written in interval notation would be a negative three halves to a positive infinity. We place the square bracket on the negative three halves to indicate that negative three halves, you may use that number in that radicand. We can also do this same process on number 20, where we set the radicand greater than or equal to zero, meaning positive values or the number zero. I then subtract three off each side of this inequality. And as I continue in the solving process, I now divide by negative one. When I divide by a negative number, I must reverse the direction of the inequality. So all values less than or equal to three would be fine substituted underneath the square root. Written in interval notation, this would be values to the left of three, which would be negative infinity to three. And I put a closed bracket on the three indicating that I can use the value of three in that expression and it would be defined. If I go to my connection to college algebra on my next page, I see function notation. Number one, I'm not going to do the exact example given. I'm going to change it and substitute a one-third. If I put a one-third in these parentheses, that's my x value. So one over x will become one over one-third. This is referred to as a complex fraction, which is a fraction inside a fraction. This could be rewritten as one divided by one third, which means to multiply times the reciprocal, which results as a value of three. Number two asks for the domain. The way we find the domain is by setting the radicand greater than or equal to zero. That tells me what values will end up being positive or equal to zero such that I can take the square root. On number three, it's asking me for x and y intercepts. An x-intercept is the point or points in which the y value would be zero. So you would substitute the y value of zero in and find the x values that match it. The y-intercepts, or really just the y-intercept, would be that point where the x value is zero so you would substitute the x value of zero in to determine the y value that matches it. Now, as I scroll down, I'd also like to look at part B and part C. So I'm gonna get down where I can see my graph. Part B says, I keep scrolling down, asks f of zero equals something. Well, in this case, your x value is zero, therefore you are looking for the y value. x value is zero at this point on the line, and this is the point zero, negative three. Therefore, the answer, the y value is negative three. The next question says, f of x equals zero, meaning we want x values when the y value equals zero. 
This will occur at the points along the x-axis. There are one, two, three points along the x-axis on this line. The far left point is the point negative three, zero. So that's my first x value of negative three. The second point is hard to read, so we're gonna guess this point to be approximately, I don't know, one and three fourths, which can also be written as seven fourths. So we're just having to guess a little bit on that one. The third point is also a guess because it's not exactly on the line. So let's kind of estimate this one as being six and one fourth, which could be rewritten as 25 fourths. So the three x values that are on this line when the y value is zero are negative three, seven fourths, and 25 fourths.